Okay, so today I want to finish off uh, chapter 25 and starting on chapter 26. The topic of the day is fields, and in particular the electric field. So first I just wanted to introduce what a field is, sometimes called a vector field. There's a applet with a link below that you can play around with, but here's a little shot uh, basically showing the electric field around a negative charge. So all these arrows, every point in space has an arrow associated with it or a vector. And the magnitude decreases as you get further away. That's indicated by the color. And uh, the direction here is always towards the, the uh, negative charge in the middle. Gravitational field is another kind of a field. This is electric field. There's also magnetic fields. And you can have different uh, complicated things. You can have a double positive charge. Now the field looks a little different. You can have, uh, we're going to talk about dipole charge where there's a plus and a minus and in each case this shows if you were to put a little positive test charge uh, at each point the vector shows what direction the electric force would be. So this is called the field model and these patterns around magnets is another way of showing uh, fields so here we have little iron filings that when you sprinkle it around a magnet it shows the, shows the magnetic influence which we call the magnetic field, sort of points away from N and points towards S. And the concept of fields was introduced first by Michael Faraday in 1821. So in the Newtonian view, if you have um, particle B, it exerts a force, or sorry, particle A exerts a force on particle B. But in Faraday's view, what happens is particle A, which is like the source, uh, alters the space around it somehow, and then particle B in that space responds to the altered space. And so the field exerts this force on, v, on B. So a field is, uh, mathematically, it's a vector assigned to every point in space. The alteration of space around a mass is called a gravitational field. The alteration of space around an electric charge is called the electric field. So if you have a probe charge, uh, lowercase q, experiences an electric force at some uh, point in space, we say that there's an electric field, E, causing that force. So the force on little q divided by q is defined as uh, the electric field. The units are newtons per coulomb, and uh, the magnitude E of the electric field is called the electric field strength. So here's point one and point two. Here's the electric field at point one, E1. Here's the electric field at point two, E2. If you put a, a positive test charge at point one, it'll experience a, a force in the direction of the electric field. If you put a positive test charge at point two, it'll experience a force also in the direction of the electric field at that, at that point. So any charged particle uh, with charge Q sitting at a uh, point in space that has an electric field E will experience a force Q times E. If Q is positive, then the for electric force on the particle is in the direction of the electric field. If uh, Q is negative, like if you have an electron, then the force is in the opposite direction of the electric field. Okay, so now let's look at this another way. Start with uh, point charge Q, which we'll call the source charge. And now we have a point in space, and we want to know what is the electric field at that point. The way we determine it is we place a uh, test, or probe charge, Q prime, at this point in space. We measure the force on Q prime, and then the electric field is the force on Q prime divided by Q prime. It is a vector in the direction of the force on Q prime, as long as Q prime is positive. And there's an equation for that. Uh, if it's going to be uh, Coulomb's law, but now divided by the Q prime. So you'll have 1 over 4 pi epsilon, epsilon naught times Q divided by R squared. And it's in the direction away from Q. And Q is this source charge. So if we can uh, calculate this electric field at lots of different points of space, we get a field diagram. Notice that the field strength uh, 
field always points away from Q, and the field strength decreases rapidly as you get uh, further and further away from R. So recall unit vectors. If you're looking at uh, a source charge right here, okay, um, and you're looking at R1 as being the unit vector in the direction of point 0.1 in space, R2 is the unit vector in the direction of 2, R R3 hat is the unit vector in the direction of 3. Then the electric field at points 1, 2, and 3 are 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times q over r squared times r hat, where r hat is the, is the unit vector uh, in the direction of r. If you have a negative charge, then q, so q is negative, then you'll see this, this electric field always points in the opposite direction of r hat, so always towards the origin, or towards the, uh, the charge q. Okay, so this figure shows the electric field of a negative point charge. And that's it for chapter 25. We're now moving into chapter 26, all about the electric field. Most of this chapter will be concerned with the sources of the electric field. We can understand the essential physics on the basis of simplified models of the sources of electric field. So, for example, a point charge. Any little small collection of charges that is uh, much smaller than other objects around can be modeled as a point charge. Uh, here is an infinitely long charged wire. So again, any uh, uh, line-like or narrow uh, long collection of charges uh, with that is much thinner than other aspects of the problem and much longer can be modeled as an infinitely long charged wire. We're also going to consider infinitely wide uh, charged plane and a charged sphere. And we'll do most of that tomorrow. So we already found electric field of a point charge at the end of chapter 25. Uh, it's Q over R squared times this constant, Coulomb's constant. And the electric field was defined as the force uh, on Q divided by Q. So the SI units of the electric field are newtons per coulomb. And some typical field strengths would be uh, 10 to the minus 3 to a tenth of a newton per coulomb would be the current, the electric field inside a normal current carrying wire in your house. Uh, near the surface of the Earth, we often have electric field strengths of 100 to 10,000 uh, uh, newtons per coulomb. If you charge up an object by rubbing it with fur or something, you can get a thousand up to a million newtons per coulomb in electric field surrounding that charged object. Just before you see a little spark, like if you uh, zap yourself by touching a doorknob or something, then that must be an electric field of 3 times 10 to the 6, or 3 million newtons per coulomb. That's the dielectric breakdown of, of dry air. And inside an atom, in between the nucleus and the electron, we have electric field strengths of up, uh, upwards of 10 to the power 11 newtons per coulomb. So, we did one point charge. What if you have multiple point charges? Well, simply, uh, the net electric field at each point is a superposition, or a sum, of the electric fields due to each individual charge. And here it is split up in the x and y components, but for each, uh, for each component, it's just uh, the electric field due to source charge 1, plus the electric field due to source charge 2, etc., etc., etc. Dipoles. So two equal but opposite charges separated by some small distance form an electric dipole. For example, uh, a water molecule is a permanent dipole because there's a little more negative charge, two negatives on this side and two pluses on this side. So you've separated charges out um, vertically here. And backwards, this dipole uh, was induced, so you did have... Uh, a, uh, a regular atom, spherically symmetric atom, but in the presence of an electric field, the electron cloud gets pulled downwards a little bit, and uh, so the, the, it gets stretched out into a dipole. 
The dipole moment, uh, called P, is a vector which points from the negative side to the positive side, and it is defined as Q, the amount of either positive or negative charge, the absolute magnitude of the charge that got separated, times the distance between the two uh, centers of charge separation. The SI units of the dipole moment are coulombs times meters. So if we look at the field or electric field surrounding uh, a dipole, if you look uh, on the plane which uh, so it sort of bisects the, the, di the dipole and is uh, perpendicular to the dipole moment, then you'll see that the electric field points down uh, towards the negative side. If you look up along the axis of the dipole, then it points uh, a little bit away from the dipole. So here the uh, electric field due to the plus is a little greater than the electric field due to the minus, which is down. And so the net electric field is upwards, positive y direction here. And if you repeat that calculation for many different points surrounding the dipole, this is where all those uh, vectors would point. And it looks a little nicer if you connect all the dots here and make electric field lines, which point away from the positive part of the dipole towards the negative part of the dipole and spread out in space uh, as shown. And in terms of equations, there's actually two separate equations we use here. Uh, one is the electric field along the dipoles, approximately equal to uh, 2 times the dipole moment divided by r cubed times this Coulomb's constant. So it goes as 1 over r cubed. Uh, and that's to, as measured from the center of the dipole. And then, so that's along the axis. If you measure in the plane that bisects the dipole, it's again 1 over r cubed, but it's negative 1 times the dipole moment divided by r cubed times Coulomb's constant. And the field, so this negative sign says that the field uh, in the bisecting plane is opposite the, the uh, dipole, direct, dipole moment direction. And it has half the strength as the on-axis field at the same distance. So here's just a picture showing uh, two uh, positive charges. So if you have two equal positive charges, there's, uh, there's zero electric field halfway in between them, and it spreads out like this. So if you're very, very far away, it just acts as, uh, as like being a point charge of uh, magnitude 2 at the center. And as you get uh, closer, it has this interesting pattern.